Hi, I am Steve Stasek. I want to welcome you to Finding Your Motivation um, with, your, with yours truly, Steve Stasek. And I have, my company is Leader Speakers. What I do for a living is I help people overcome their fears of, speak, of public speaking and become more effective speakers. Of course, there's a lot of, a lot more things involved in public speaking training. I don't like to look at myself as a coach because I believe in training more than coaching. Um, so I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, we, I just do the training. Now, my co-host this evening is Kim O'Neill. And Kim is a confidence and interviewing specialist, which actually um, goes hand in hand with, well, the interviewing part doesn't, but the confidence part does with public speaking, because as you all know, and I'm sure you'll agree, Kim, that once you learn how to speak in front of people and get that, that that's, that's the ultimate, well, one of the ultimate confidences, correct? Absolutely. I agree. It, it, it has a ripple effect that can just, you know, span every area of a person's life. It makes a huge difference feeling confident in your speaking ability. So tell us a little bit about uh, your expertise then. Just give us a little snippet here before we start. Yeah. So I started in 2013 with interview coaching, helping people prepare for their job interviews so they can get that, get the job sooner than later. And uh, it, we over don't want time, it sooner. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's well, an that's, understatement. <laughs> exactly. It, okay. And that's why it matters so much too. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was interesting because over time, then I saw this, this development of my coaching really lend itself to people's personal lives and how they are feeling about themselves just as an individual in their everyday life. So that's where it, it, it expanded to confidence and interview coaching. Cause it's, it's goes beyond just helping people prepare for interviews. Right. So even though we are running the show here, we're going to put plugs in for each other. You can go to leaderspeakers.com and get all the information you need. Um, if you're looking for public speaking help, and Kim, where can they go to find you? Oh, thank you so much. Yes, they can go to KimO'NealCoaching.com and O'Neill is O-N-E-I-L-L. -L. Right. And, and I spell, you know, you know, every time I go to spell O'Neill, it's like, is it O-N-E-A-L? Is it yeah. I-L with one L's, two L's? What's going on here? Everyone has that, that going on in their head. So I just yeah. go ahead and spell it. Yeah. There you have it. So there's where you can reach us now to get into the subject. That everybody's been waiting for because some of you folks out there may be going to an interview. I've actually got one tomorrow myself, um, a little side thing. And um, so I'm going to listen to Kim's input here because it could be helpful for me. Well, also. congrats, Steve, and, and best wishes for your interview. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll <laughs> see. You know, and the funny thing is with an interview, what a lot of people don't realize and they get intimidated by, but it's a two-way street, right? It is. You don't want to come off like it is. So you're so afraid to sometimes be yourself. And, and Well, it, and I, so I just want to go back to when I said, congrats, congrats, because just the interview itself, I mean, that's a gift. Not everyone gets an, a chance to interview. So, mm -hmm. you know, good job, I'm not surprised, but good job getting the interview. So, yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Right. That's true too. You, that is a good point. Yeah. That's an excellent point. And you know what? I've gotten more interviews with things that I've wanted to do, like on the side. I've got, you know, I'm going to do a little, some, especially during this pandemic here, because it's really hard, and especially around Christmas, but around the holidays, for me to appear in person. So do these things live in person, not the radio show, obviously, but my training. And I like, I prefer to do it live because it has much better impact than it would on zoom not that you can't do it by zoom i don't want to rule that out but it's much right. more effective okay well, well let's talk about the first thing in our list here and this is really important because a lot of people don't do this so i had an opportunity one time i contracted my services out to a company that went into car dealerships and what i did was i interviewed and trained or i recruited people so the whole process was i interviewed people and then i trained them and it's so funny because now you don't really have to know too much going into a car dealership interview. But if you're going into an interview, like just for instance, like the one I'm going into tomorrow, you don't want, you want to go ahead and either go to YouTube, which I find is more helpful than reading on their website sometimes. Mm. And, you know, either or, but I want to find out a good, I don't want to, I don't want to get too inundated with the information, 
but I want to know, get a good concept of the company, right? Absolutely. Yep. You do not want to go in there and fumble around and, and you know, and they're going to ask you, you know, they can tell if you've exactly. done your research. It, it makes a huge difference. I feel like this has been said so many times and it, it, it bears repeating still a million more times because so many people still don't do it. So you want to look at things like, you know, what do they value? What's important to them? You know, what are recent successes or what's the direction that they're moving towards? Those things make a huge difference. And I think it's really helpful when the interviewee can bridge the, bridge the gap, you know, find what you have in common with any of those things you read on their website or in their YouTube video. Great tip there. Right. And, and then be able to bring that up in the conversation naturally exactly um, to show that, you know, you've, you've l- taken time to learn about them and you have an understanding of, of what's important to them. And about the position too, because they're always, yes. well, we'll tell you, tell us a little bit about yourself. We'll tell you about the position, but it's always good to know what they're looking for in the position because, so you can add to it or what have you, or be familiar with it. Right. Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> there's, there's, there's that one. <laughs> now, knowing yourself. So during an interview, your job is to sell yourself. This is something that you and I think you and I talked about a little bit. I actually have a video on my website that, so I do presentation skills training, obviously, as part of my public speaking. That's what some of this leads into in our pro- training programs. But I actually crafted a video to instruct people to design a little mini presentation about themselves. Nice. Yeah. That's and, great. Uh, yeah. I mean, so you want, you want to sell yourself. So first of all, you want to present the solution, which is you. So I'm Steve Stazak. This is, you know, this is what I'm capable of. Boom. And then you go into your experience. And then most importantly, you want to close out that presentation. Oh, you go into your experience. Then name some of the things that you've done, some of your accomplishments. And then in the end, you want to tie it. You want to conclude it by tying that. And this is, this is getting a little technical with my presentation skills, but tie it back into the solution, which you first stated in the beginning of the interview. So you're going to close out. I love so how would you do that? How would you do that? You're I, the expert. I, I love the way that you tie all that together. I, I think one of the, uh, keywords that trips a lot of people up is the selling yourself. I agree. Your an interview is where you're selling yourself. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. and and if people can start to even just realize that okay, but it doesn't mean you have to you have to brag. It doesn't mean you have right. to be someone that you're not. You know, you said earlier, it, you know, about being yourself and I agree. So to me it's it's all about do you fully understand who you are and what you bring to the table to an organization? So it's just really getting clear on who you are and your skills, your strengths, even your weaknesses. Your yeah, okay, let's talk about that for a second because okay. we don't have that on the itinerary, do we? No, I and don't think so. That's always I always had problem with that question. So what's yeah. your weakness? I'd say chocolate and women or something. You know. If, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. But you don't you don't want to say that. You you want right. to tell them what. You're the expert. What are some what are some key things? There are different approaches to it. Of course, the uh the I think where everyone's mind goes to is, "Oh my gosh, what am I awful at? Now I have to tell them that." Right. That's that's one approach and depending on what you're awful at, you know, I say use discernment because this is an interview. They are going to have to make a decision about you. So is your is the first thing that comes to mind something that really will work against you? Then don't give them that one. It's okay. Right. So another way to look at sharing a weakness is what's a skill you're currently improving upon or want to get better at. And there you go. That's your weakness. So for, for example, someone working in an office, let's say you're not very good at Excel skills and you'd like to become better. Okay. Your weakness is right now you're more at a beginner level of Excel and your goal is to become more of an intermediate advanced user. That right there, it's we all have weaknesses. So the key is to find something that is a genuine weakness and then be able to comfortably share it. Because the person who goes in and essentially says, Well, I don't have one or I can't think of one, that is that's gonna work against you. Yeah. So 
Yeah. So you could always say, now there's two approaches here. Now I, I take this back. So I've done some research on that before. And like, you could just say, well, you know, my weakness is, you know, sometimes I tend to, I tend to put in more hours than I should, or okay. I take on too many tasks, right. you know, cause that's sort of a positive negative, right? I, yeah. I tend to take on, I take, I tend to want to take on too much work and, or, or something of that nature, right? It's sort of a, yeah. somewhat of a positive. Those, yeah, I think those work too. And, and the key is always just to make sure that you're speaking about it from a genuine place, knowing that um, this is something that I am actively working on, or I have a strong desire to improve so that that genuine that genuine nature comes across and it doesn't sound like you're trying to, you know, kind of throw it off. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's all. So, yeah, I mean, you could do any one of those things. Um, you know, I, I just learned this, I don't know, a few years ago, excuse me, a few years ago, but yeah, I mean, sort of make it like, you know, I work too hard. That, I mean, just in that vein, you know, like I'm a, sometimes I'm too diligent or what have you, you know, you, you, you flip it around. Yeah, definitely. I, I totally agree with that one. And, uh, I, that's another approach for sure. All right. So we got that one covered. Hope you guys are taking notes out there. If you, especially if you know, and there's a lot of people looking for jobs right now too. Still. I know I agree this. Yeah. This is key information that is very useful for anybody looking for a job right now. Yes, ma'am. So practice, and I never really thought about this before. Okay. But just like you're practicing a speech before your presentation, don't do the mirror thing. Get a couple of people and have them answer, have, answer. ask some questions, ask you some, go through a mock interview, right? With your friends. Absolutely. Or relatives or something. Yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the mock interview. You've got to get that practice where you're actively saying these words out loud. And it makes a huge difference when you're saying it to someone else who's a living, breathing being with eyeballs yes. looking right back at you. Right. So, yeah. Even though it's not the true interview, it gives you a semblance and, and a dry run, if you, if you, if you will. Exactly. If you yep. will. That's a dated term, isn't it? If you will. What do they say nowadays? <laughs> I don't know. I, okay. We talk about dated terms. I tend to find myself saying, Oh my word lately. Oh so. my God. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. Oh my word. Yeah. That's something my grandmother would use. Right? <laughs> used since she's not living anymore. <laughs> um, Bob Dole just died though. He was 98 years old. Oh, I had not heard that yet. Okay. Oh, wow. 98 and his wife's still living. Wow. Wow, pretty amazing. Um, yeah, I was, uh, you know, I took a uh, lift back from, you know, shuttling back and forth from my hotel, the conference that I was in uh, early last week. And this guy said, well, we, I, somehow we had a subject of age. And he said, well, there's a, there's a guy that I give lift rides to. He's 101 years old and he still drives. Whoa. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Wow. Okay. Okay, now here's a big one. I'm going to go back to the car dealership thing because I don't know what people think when they're coming in for a car dealership. They're young, they're millennials, and I'm going to say that out loud. And maybe they don't think it's an executive position, but oh, come on, man. Come in, dress for success. Yes. And that is the worst thing. You know, you know they, what we used to teach in the class is authority sells. Mm. I don't care what year we're in, if we're 20. 40, 20, 50, it doesn't matter. If somebody's got their sleeves rolled up and I see some ink, you know, even though it's in vogue these days, or I see a guy with a suit and a tie, it looks more like they're a um, uh, an authority figure. Like they know yeah. the product inside and out, that they're professional, right? It does. It makes a difference. It, it's... It says that you care about this job. It says right. that you are you know, interested in the position and not necessarily just looking for any position. Right. 
it's, it may sound like something that is, um, well, you know, I shouldn't be judged on what I wear. And that's what the interview is like, that's going on all throughout the interview. They're, they're essentially judging you. They're having to make conclusions about you. So don't leave room for them to make judgments that are going to work against you. Right. And your, your attire absolutely is speaking for you and about you the moment you walk in. And it shouldn't be plain, but it shouldn't be loud either. Exactly. Your attire. I mean, yeah. and some kids used to come in and they just set their phone right up on the desk, right? Because they're always carrying their phone. I'm like, really? Mm. You expected mm. a call during this interview? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not gonna, so You good. know what I should have said? I should have said, okay, sell me the phone. The, uh, ooh, there you go. You know, how, you know what the secret to that is? When I was younger, I got tripped on that, tripped up on that a million times. I just didn't take time to really figure it out. But once I did, I shouldn't say once I did, I didn't till later. Okay. But the product, the pen, I'd say, well, you know, this pen here, you know, it's, it's, you can see that it's streamlined. It's easy to hold, you know, you, you know, it writes well. That's, that's what I used to do in sales. And I was horrible. I wasn't horrible, but I wasn't great. Okay. But then I found out <clears throat> later on that what you're doing is you're providing a solution. Hmm. So you need to ask that prospect. So, you know, how do you use a pen every day? Is it comfortable when you write? Are you having issues with that? How often do you have to put, you know, get a new pen because of the ink, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you ask them a bunch of five or six solution questions and then tailor your presentation to those. That is so good. That is reminding me of a quote I just saw, and maybe it was actually on your website. <laughs> it was, it was, it was something about on my so, website. Wow. I did something. I, yeah, no, I, I, it may have been. Cause of course I was researching you before today's show, <laughs> but I just uh, redid my website too, because the guy that did the mobile app didn't have my logo up there. And, oh, wow. Oh no, the logo wasn't up there. And what I did wasn't up there either on the oh, mobile wow. version. Oh, goodness. Okay. Well, th anyway, th my memory, my recall of what this what thing that I saw earlier was um, something about selling yourself is not blah, blah, blah. What you think oh, it is. that's uh, that little snippet up there. Selling the yourself is asking the... questions. Right. There yeah, you go. That, that he did well. <laughs> okay. That I love. That was, I mean, that's excellent. I hope people are taking notes on that because that's a really good tip of, especially at the well, I'm, I'm just, I, I won't get into it, but I'm just going to jump ahead a little bit. Yeah, go the end ahead. Of the inter well, at the, at the end, at, <laughs> okay, I'm leaping all the way to the end of the interview when it's typical to be asked, do you have any questions for us? And so if someone were to go back and listen to the questions that you just asked, uh, you could apply those to an organization in terms of getting deep, you know, deeper information about them and understanding of the position and how you fit in to the the bigger picture of everything so correct yeah that would probably be down the line <laughs> it, it would but that's okay we pre she prefaced it um here's another one that's a little pet peeve of mine too arriving early mm. if people aren't there on time it's not good whether it's on time for an interview on time for a radio show tonight no on time for no you weren't late um on time for i'm um, just trying to think of something but when people aren't on time it's a big pet peeve of mine say more about that tell people why that's a pet peeve of yours well i don't know because i i guess it just makes a good impression yeah uh, you know that that you're that you're uh, that you're organized and you're on time, that you care about it. I've, I, a lot of people, a lot of people take time as a sign of uh, respect or disrespect. Yes. So, okay. There you go. Yeah. This is true. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's true. We've got a member of our family that always shows up late to the gatherings, which I interpret that as not really respect, but I don't know, just general slackness. And you know what? If you're slack getting somewhere, what are you going to do on the job? Yeah, it what makes a performer. Are you going to be? Are you going to be late to work in the morning? 
that can yep. that can lead to a whole bunch of different questions. And so what's this guy gonna? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I saw this somewhere or I heard it in like millennials or like some I don't want to pick on millennials, but <laughs> but what it was about one, they said, Well, you know, we're 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 you know, I'm sorry, but you know, it, but when they do it habitually, that's not a good sign. It's, it's not. And, and just for total transparency, I have to acknowledge that time is something I have personally had to work on myself. Uh -oh. And it, well, and a lot of people do. It's not um, uh, just in terms of in, as far as the respect thing on the, the person's end who's trying to work on time. You know, for some people, it might be, oh, I want to disrespect this person or whatever. But for a lot of people, it's not. It's no, it, there's some there's other stuff going on, and it really, you know, it's important to work on it. It's important to to start to shift that and work. Like they're on, not wearing a watch. <laughs> um, they're not looking at their phone. <laughs> I well, you just gave away one of my secret tips. Is it's so I think it's such a subliminal thing for the interviewee and the interviewer for the candidate to be wearing a watch for themselves to make sure that, oh. you know, that they're number one, showing they up are on conscious time, of time, that they're conscious of time. Exactly. So I wear one. I'm a watch guy. Yeah, I, I am too. I'm, I'm not for this because I've noticed I tend to hit my wrists oh. on the desk. Right. Uh, but, but I agree. Yes. Watches are, are huge to make a big difference. You know, when I do uh, public speaking events, um, I tend to get there an hour and a half before. Now, this doesn't have a whole lot to do with interview, but I get there way early because, number one, I want to make sure my equipment's working properly. Any kind of paraphernalia I have to distribute is out. And I'm familiar with the surroundings, so now I feel like more comfortable because it's like my space and they're coming into my space. I, that's excellent. I, so in terms of job interviews, all a few of my tips yeah. are if you have not already driven to the location, mm -hmm. then either do a dry run, drive to it. So, you know, you know, where Unless is it's the two hours away or something? It, exactly. If, yeah, if it's not that far away, then, yeah. you, you know, it's you can a good do that. idea. Even so, another thing to do is to, I love this feature that Google has. Google has this feature, uh, I don't know if it's, I find a lot of people still don't know about it, but it's a feature that lets you tell them, okay, I'm going to this location on this day. And I want to arrive there by this time and it'll estimate, okay, well, the traffic typically on yeah, Mondays yeah, yeah, yeah. at this time. Interesting. Yes. And that is so helpful. It's, it's so accurate that I recommend that for so many things. So definitely do that. And what's it called? Uh, so we can tell our people out there. It's just, I don't think it has a name. It's just a little, um, it's, it's after you put in the addresses and then Is that it, a pull down or something. Yeah. It says like arrive by depart time. Um, maybe I can pull it up while we're doing this show here and I can tell you what it says, but it's a fantastic feature. And for job interviews, I think the standard and what I typically, typically recommend is 15 minutes there, you know, we'll arrive 15 minutes early. Uh, there are some people who, um, depending on the jobs, the interview processes I've been involved with will show up 30 minutes to an hour ahead. I think that is extensive. That's yeah, not that's a little extensive. Yeah, that's not necessary. Um, 15 minutes is a good general time. Okay. There are you heard. You heard it right there. 15. That's usually when I try to do it. And two, the earlier you get there, it'll calm your nerves because you're getting familiar with the that environment, I would think. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and look up that time, the, uh, the feature on Google right now. Good. Well, I'm looking over this. So the next one we're going to be doing is making a first impression, which has to do with dress and time, but they're looking for someone who is confident and assertive. And so basically you want to just introduce yourself, be yourself right off the bat. Right. And be then, so you want, you want to be personable right up front until you get into the, the nitty gritty. Absolutely. And I think personable is a, a better word too, because I, I hear in my head, I can think of a lot of people who are very shy and who aren't naturally very personable thinking, well, if I'm going to be natural, I'm not going to be very personable or, you know, I don't really like to engage with other people, but you well, want to find interviewing for a sales job. <laughs> exactly. 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 I'm kidding. Yeah. Well, 
but you, you want to, you want to be able to interact with these people. You want to connect with them. And so, you know, you know, again, when you're doing your mock interview, practice the handshake, practice the, you know, having small talk at the beginning of an interview with whoever you're practicing with, get yourself comfortable with that kind of stuff, because right. then you're going to appear more natural and still be who you are. And, you know, some interviewers will do that and some of them just get right down to it, which I don't like. Mm, yeah. And I like when they go, so tell us a little bit about yourself. But, you know, so, you know, I was born, you know, whatever. Now that's fine. But, you know, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, you're going to naturally tell yourself, tell them a little bit about yourself. They could just ask you some questions. So where do you live? You know, I hate when people just want to give you, want, want them to get, want them for you to give a history. I, I'd rather have somebody ask me questions. So where are you from? Blah, blah, blah. Because then you're, you're, you're going like, oh, my God. OK, so what do I say here? How long is it going to be? Yeah, well, I, the one, the common thing I tend to see is when people get asked that question, they think, oh no, just like you, the reaction you just had, like, yeah. oh no, what do I say? And then they start to rattle off like their right. personal history. And it's, it's not about that. It's about your professional experience and relate things to that arena. Oh. And, and with that, there are certain jobs where, okay, it will make sense to add some of your personal life. I mean, that right. again, that depends on the job, right. but for most jobs, no, you don't start telling them, Oh, well, I'm, I'm married. I have kids. You tell them about, well, I'm currently, you know, I have education in this and I have five years experience with that. Oh, really? And okay. yeah, I think this, yeah, this is what I recommend. It's, it's make it relevant to why you're there. They don't need to know, you know, Oh, I like to garden. And I right. like, you know, that's not typically what they're looking for when they ask, tell me about yourself. Okay. The other thing too is, and sometimes I have an issue with this because you want to skew the questions to what the interview may want to hear, but a answer, because you're going to be, you want to make sure that a job's a fit for you. And I've been guilty of this before, <clears throat> trying to answer the questions and then it, maybe it wasn't totally honest. Oh. Because you want the job. I mean, I shouldn't say honest, but you're sort of, you're answering embellishing? questions to appease, pardon me? Embellishing? Well, not embellishing. You know, you're answering questions to appease the interviewer, okay. whether it may be something that, um, that you're really interested in or not. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I, I do. I do. And I think this is, this is one of those sticky areas because it's key. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of making sure that you're, you're being genuine, you're being authentic. And yeah. so how do you do that when you perceive that there are areas where what's genuine for you is going to conflict with them? Right. And so, so <clears throat> this, this again is why preparation is so important because if you can you start go. to, yeah. Cause if you can That's start to, to highlight those things and go, Ooh, you know, we might have, you know, a conflict with when it comes to this topic or a conflict when it comes to that topic. So then start to think ahead. Well, you know, where do you two meet in the middle? Or if you don't agree with this thing that they're doing, you know, what's your, how would you respond to that in a way that's not going to essentially tell them they're wrong for doing something? Right. How, how do you bridge the gap and allow it to be where you're right and they're right? And it can be a win-win. Right. No pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you know what? Do you mind if I go back to the Google? I thought you were going to say, do you mind if I go to the restroom or something? I'm like, what? No, no. I can fill. Okay. I can fill in for three minutes or so. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no. So it's, it's really simple. Um, you can do it both on your desktop or on your cell phone. I will say that from a desktop, again, there's not really a name for it, but it's, it's after you've put in, you've requested directions. So you've put right. in a destination and then you, you have to put in where you're driving from. And then uh, right below that, it pops up and it says, leave now. And it has a little arrow. And when you click uh -huh. on that, then it gives you other options for leave now, depart at, or arrive by. Oh. It's, it's fantastic. Well, that would be good. I had an issue a few weeks ago when I was going to a networking event where I actually paid to be one of the guest speakers. Okay. And it was raining. I locked my keys in my car. Oh. My, my car would not start because my battery was dead in my key fob. Okay. And I did, I was at the gym. Oh. 
And I could not, I called five friends. One of them called me a lift because nobody could make it there. For, it was just weird that they were all doing, I mean, this is in the like three o'clock in the afternoon. And when I finally got home, I was trying, I was like, do I have enough time to get here? And it was raining and everything. Actually, I got there before everybody else did, but that would have been helpful to know. Yeah, I, I think everyone needs to know about this feature. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. Okay, well, that covers the honesty. <laughs> <laughs> so ask questions like you were just mentioning. At the, usually at the end of the interviews when you're going to ask these questions. If you don't ask questions, and I've done this before, mainly because I think unconsciously or subconsciously I wasn't truly interested in the job. Otherwise, okay. I would have. Yeah. Sometimes I forced them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. Um, so sometimes it says that you may want to prepare some questions before the interview. And I've actually done that, too. So I've been around the horn. Yeah, I, I do that, too. I think it's I think it's very helpful to have a few questions already written down in advance if they if they allow you to bring something into the interview room, such as just a pad of paper, then I say, do it, bring that pad of paper in with you, have your questions already written right. down and have more than one, because it's very possible. They're already going to answer some of your questions throughout the interview. And so you want to have some backups, but, uh, I know there's a, a tip that you give that I think is really key. And you also mention for the interviewee to take notes during the interview. Oh yeah. And, and that being a great source. Did of, I say that? You, yes, <laughs> yes, Steve, you said that. <laughs> but okay, that, that's a good one. It is a good one because that's yeah. a great source of, you know, let's say you came with three questions and they've already answered all three and you're, you're racking your brain. Mm -hmm. If you've been taking some notes, you could, from that. That's correct. You know, elaborate and ask them to elaborate or tell you more. That's you know, correct. So, yeah. That's correct. Take notes. Yeah. Take the old notes during the interview. God, there was something on the tip of my tongue in the front of my brain or whatever you want to call it that I was going to bring up. And now I forgot it. You know, those things usually come back like right after the end of the show. Oh, yeah, that's right. I can dub it in. Maybe I can dub it in in the recording here. There you go. Yeah. By the way, we go to Apple. We go to uh, these are broadcasted fed through Apple. They are fed through um, Spotify. It's Anchor Podcast, folks is where this is primarily broadcasted from. And I'll be putting this on LinkedIn and Facebook. Awesome. And Twitter. And I just learned that at this um, convention that I was at, that TikTok's a new hot thing. It's going to kill everything. But I can't <sighs> do this on TikTok. It's too long. You get, if, if you put it on TikTok, you got to dance with it or something. You gotta... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You got to do something silly. Yeah, this is how you interview for a job while I dance. Yeah, I could always put the link on uh, Instagram, but I it will be on Twitter. It will be on LinkedIn tomorrow. Tonight it'll feed over to Apple, and because uh, they're just it's just on there. I mean, it just stays on there, so we're good to go there. Um, awesome. We're not at the end yet. We're not. What? There. What? Yeah, we got Almost, more, but not quite. Okay. Oh, I know what I was going to say. You know where this applies to the this interview is when I, I do, I cold call for my business. Okay. And that is a big interview. Definitely. Yeah, it really is. So a lot of these things apply. So Absolutely. I'm not going, uh, most of it's phone, <clears throat> but I'll write down questions. Um, and I try to make a good impression on the phone. Um, know my target, know, know about their company. Yeah, I always Google if I always look at the company. Good. Yep. Yep. That's really sure good. Do. Okay, the last but not least. <clears throat> and if you are really interested in the position, you will solidify your interest by sending them some kind of communication, right? Reiterating Absolutely. your interest in the position. <sighs> I love that you use the word solidify your interest, because I think people can assume that, well, they know I'm interested because I applied or they know I'm interested because we just spoke, but think about this. How many people are they interviewing? And, you know, it's tiring to interview a lot of people. Right. It, it makes a difference when someone follows up and, you know, and 
sends a thank you note or a thank you email to the interviewers mm -hmm. because uh, again, a lot of people don't. So those that Interview do say hers and hers, yeah. Ex yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so, why I have one with tomorrow or her. Interview well, her. Her, her. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and Steve, I'm going to be honest as, as before I be, I started interview coaching, this was a thing that I honestly did not believe much in. I didn't like it. I thought it was kind of tacky. So if anybody else out there is thinking, what, why are they saying this? Everyone says this. I don't want to do it. I'm going to tell you right now, it makes a huge difference. Um, especially in this day and age when just so much is going on, it really shows that you are appreciating their time to interview you. They did not have to give you that interview. They, you know, they did not have to, um, take time for you. And so, and they're people too. It, so it's just, yeah. I'm so anyway, so my point is I'm absolutely in alignment with you on this one. It, it makes a huge difference. Well, it does. They don't have to interview, but I got to tell you when I interviewed people, I wanted to get a good person so bad. I was, or not so bad, but I was like, I interviewed everybody, man. Cause you just never know. You just never know. Yep. And, and just that's like I where did for this show and that's where a million the resumes, but I had to start filtering things out, you know, podcast experience, you know, what your profession was, you know, I had everything had to come in line here. Right. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yep. And you made the cut. <laughs> Yay! The question is, is she going to come back and work with me? <laughs> we've got a show to do steve <laughs> we are doing it we're in we're but we've got a we're, we're entertaining folks also we are entertaining we're folks. personable that we're, we're being, being personable in this in this session here <laughs> very personable right now no it's been it's been great i love what we're discussing and sharing with everyone i i really look forward to hearing people's feedback too what they what their thoughts are on preparing for an interview. I know I've also heard people say, what do you mean prepare for an interview? And I mean, and I want to say, what do you mean? What do I mean? You, you, <laughs> it's, it's essential. You've got to do it. We just, we just get, you got 40 minutes, almost 45 minutes of how to prepare for an interview here. Successfully. Yes. From an expert. From two experts, I'm going to well, say. Well, yeah, well, you, but this is what you specialize in, but yes. I put some, I did contribute some valuable information. Yeah, you but, absolutely um, did. In any case, uh, if you guys, once again, uh, the show is brought to you by Leader Speakers. We are public speaking training specialists. Um, and you can reach us at leaderspeakers.com. And once again, you can reach Kim at Kim O'Neill coaching.com. O N E I L L. Yeah, get that one. So, how could you do it generically? If you're, if you're searching for an interview coach, like with me, I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. If you simply put in public speaking training, I don't know how it happened. And I hope Google doesn't hear this, but I'm in the first page. Woo, congrats. Well, there is a trick and I can tell you about that later. Somebody taught me, but it, it, it's not a, it's not in the, by the paid ads. It's right in the middle where, there, where there's locations. Okay. And you can do it by, um, instead of homepage. Uh-huh. I'll whisper now. Instead of your homepage, you put the name of your company. Oh. In the back end of your website. Oh, good to know. Okay. I'm listening. Yeah. That's a trick. Okay. And it works. I'll have to ask you about that when we're done here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you folks for listening. I hope and I know that you got some valuable information on here. And uh, we'll be back next week. Leader Speakers will be back next week with another helpful podcast for all you folks out there that are looking to improve your personal or business life.